<laughs> Yo, what is up guys? Back here with another comp practice video. Y'all seem to really enjoy these videos. I think the first one has almost like 3,000 views and the other one like 500. Um, if you do enjoy these videos, please leave a like on them. Please subscribe. That helps out the channel. Uh, do another one of these, you know, so I can draw on the screen, show you how I suck and how you can be better than me. Um, but, you know, these are really fun because I feel like I can teach some stuff uh, both to you and to myself. I think I get a lot out of these videos as well. I was just doing some note taking about the trip yesterday and some of the footage that we're going to go through and um, just some of the ways that I think I can improve just stepping back and looking at what I did and how I think I could do it better, um, you know, to take it into next time and, and do that. So I'm not going to dilly dally. We're going to jump into it. Uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, I will see you all in the next one. All right, this is the first spot I came on. And so there's a riffle up here that comes down along this bank here. We got some swift current. This is, um, you know, it gets pretty deep right here quickly. And then it's pretty much, you know, pretty uniform depth throughout here. And then, you know, shallows back up towards where I'm standing. I think I'm just below my knees in the depth of the water that I'm standing in right now. And so I temp the water. The water is about 33, 34 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are in the middle of January. These are cold water fishing conditions. The fish's metabolisms, they're, they're slowed down. Let's, let's just say that these fish are not eager to move for flies, really. They're pretty lethargic and patience and slow approaches is key. Um, so I started off with a urinipping rig and I fished through this whole seam through here. Uh, from you know, bottom to top, but I didn't urine if it all the way through first. I was fishing this spot, and uh, I don't know if the camera picks it up ever, but there was fish flashing in here. I saw one flash right in front of me, and you can the fish was like right in here, and you can see how close that is to me. Uh, so potentially I got a little over eager with my fishing, and this fish, you know, if it's flashing right here, you can see how clear the water is. It could probably see me. So. Um, maybe got a little too close to that one, so a little bit more patient with my waiting. But, you know, I, I nymphed to this fish specifically, you know, change my drifts, stop my rod tip in different points, try to swing it up to them, try to hold it higher in the water column, stuff like that. No takers. I couldn't get them. You know, maybe I put them down by getting too close. Maybe he wasn't interested. Uh, I think if I were to do this again, I would have started with lighter nymphs. I got pretty heavy nymphs on. I wanted to get straight to the bottom. Uh, and, you know, not taking my own advice, you know. Pools, you know, they have layers. You have this big pool, you know, a fish could be suspended, uh, you know, here. And if I'm fishing down here with my nymphs, then, uh, you know, that's no bueno. I'm not really, that's not really doing me any favors if my nymphs are down here and the fish is up. So if I had lighter nymphs, I could have, you know, potentially floated over them. And, you know, maybe this doesn't pick up because he's too lethargic. Uh, you know, go a little bit heavier, and then I hit this, and maybe I pick up that fish if my nymphs are, you know, heading straight into its mouth like that. So if I were to do it again, I would start that way. Uh, once I realized this fish wasn't going to take my nymphs and that it was probably suspended, I did put on a dry dropper rig, and that's how I fished the rest of the way up. And one of the benefits of the dry dropper rig has is, you know, you see how close to this fish I am. You know, with that dry dropper rig on my Euro rig, I could have stayed farther back and potentially not spooked this fish and, you know, made my cast up at an angle more downstream. So, you know, if I'm behind the fish, you know, the fish has eyes on the side of its head, uh, you know, it can see me, but the, I'm, I'm in his blind spot if I'm behind him. So even just staying at this angle behind him, it would have prevented maybe that fish from seeing me. Uh, it would have been a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of the fish that I hooked on the dry dropper. They didn't eat the dry, they ate the nymph. I did some adjustment with weights uh, between, typically between a 2.5 and a 2.0 millimeter bead. Uh, I hooked one on the 2.0, ended up catching one on the 2.5. Nothing came up and ate the dry, but just kind of wanted to suspend that nymph because like we talked about over here, you know, maybe that's what I needed to do. And sure enough, it paid off with two fish. Uh, like I said, there was fish flashing all throughout here. 
So I definitely left some fish there. So maybe a little bit more patient, maybe starting with this different uh, working top to bottom rather than going right to the bottom would have been a lot more beneficial to me. So definitely some lessons learned there. Uh, but caught a couple fish and then I put on a jig streamer and ended up catching a white fish somewhere in here that you'll see and pretty nice white fish. Rainbow. You know, he's slimy. Rainbow. Could be a rainbow. Or it could be a white fish. Gorgeous fish. Huh? Huh? All right, guys, this is our next victim. And by that, I mean our next spot. You have some down here, you have some nice pool kind of water. It's a little fast. I nymphed through that, didn't pick up any fish. Uh, and then again, you have this heavy riffle up here coming down along the bank. Um, through here. There is a little pocket here. It wasn't very deep. I nymphed that and dry droppered that. Didn't pick up any fish. However, over here by the bank, right here, and especially down here, you can kind of see right here, it's glassy. You have this still water pocket right along this bank and this riffle, you know, kind of comes down like this. And then you have this still water section here. And in here, there was all, just all kinds of midges coming off and back here too. Plus this bush protruded out quite a bit and left a big slack pocket here. Uh, and so you'll see kind of in this video, um, you'll see fish rise in here. There was a bunch of fish rising. I started fishing up here after I got to the top and I looked down and saw these fish rising. And, you know, it was like, hey, you know, I got to put the dry dropper on. Or I already had it on at this point, but I saw him rising. So I fished through this with my uh, size 16 ant, uh, which you can kind of see part of it right there. Uh, and yeah, I ended up catching one on a dry with that size 16 ant. And then I caught one on my dropper, which was a 2.5 Frenchie. Um, you know, and I was standing, I waited out to the middle here. I was standing in pretty heavy water casting to this bank. Uh, in order to fish them and I actually started here and was fishing and this ended up being a better positioning so um, just because I was able to cast more upstream I had a little bit more control over it than casting across and uh, and letting it kind of swing out versus an upstream drift but you know I started with that size 16 uh, uh, dry and then the nymph and I caught two fish but I still realized that these midges these midges were really small so I was probably fishing a little too big and I didn't have any midge specific dries. I did have a little size 18 like BWO limitation. So I put that on in like an attractor dry that looks kind of like a BWO. And I switched that bottom nymph from that 2.5 to a 2.0. A little bit lighter. Uh, so I didn't, you know, I didn't have as big of a dry. This fly has a lot of hackle, a lot of uh, CDC on the ant. And it just has like three pieces of CDC on the the shuttlecock emerger fly. So I went with a little bit lighter nymph in order to get down. I didn't end up catching any more on the nymph, but I think I picked up three or four more fish on the dry in this pocket, uh, which was a lot of fun. It's pretty hard to beat dry fly fishing in January. Um, and you know, there were still fish rising when I left. Uh, I had to wait out here pretty far and I was a little nervous about falling because it was cold. Uh, 
so when I came back, I ended up getting a nice brown that I'll share a picture with, and I came back, took a picture, and kind of decided, didn't want to wait out there anymore, but caught my fair share of fish out of this pocket, uh, had, a lot of, had a lot of fun doing it. Um, like I said, I didn't catch any on the dropper, so, uh, but I would, I still would leave the dropper on because I was throwing that, uh, Euro nymphing rig. And if I was just throwing a single dry, there's no way I would have got my fly there. I needed that, that weight from that nymph. So as it was, I was already having a difficult time casting there. Uh, the one thing that I would definitely do differently in this situation was my casting because I was having a little bit difficulty casting. I need more practice with the dry dropper on that microliter, which I'm using. Uh, I would often cast short and then recast immediately. And fortunately, it didn't really put down the fish that much, but uh, it could have. And I should be a little bit more weary of that. And so if I cast short, just let it drift out and then, you know, recast it back up in where the fish are. Because towards the end, a lot of them were moved in tight to the bank and were rising in there. So, and I did catch a few far back rising, but anyways, it was a fun time. You'll see a couple of fish that I caught on the dry and then my camera started having issues. So I didn't get all of them, but they were all like five inch trout, the one bigger brown that I caught. You'll see a picture of, um, but it was a lot of fun. You see a bright, bright sunshine day. It was a beautiful day to be out on the water and, uh, and catch some fish. On the dry fly. He ate the dry. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked and what you would have done differently. Always down to learn. You know, you guys have a lot of great ideas. Would love to hear from you. Let me know what you would have done differently. Let me know what you would, you liked, uh, you thought I, maybe I could improve on, uh, and why not? Let's talk about it. Let's get better together. So we'll see you in the next one.